can't use it. So okay. I have to use the, the web thing. Alrighty. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started here. Ta-da! And then we'll put Ernest on. <laughs> Check that out. Yeah, that's cool, right? Alright. Um, and so... <laughs> What we'll like, so what we, what I plan on doing is with this layout, we'll have the chat on there and then some match videos in the background just for some fun. Um, oh crap! Get everything put together. Okay, cool. So what we have here is uh, this is the Spiral series highlight reel. Uh, this is the pilot episode of it, and what we plan to do with this is um, basically go over the past tournament. Uh, that happened yesterday and possibly throughout the whole season and um, uh, find some highlights, uh, do some match analysis and uh, have some guest interviews and commentators and everything like that and yep I dressed up for this too so did Ernest it was Ernest's idea to wear the tie Yep. <laughs> <laughs> alright so um, let's see we uh, so Spiral Series Entertainment did a, has been doing the Rambat season for the past couple uh, couple weeks now. That we are on uh, Rambat two, and so we have uh, all the results compiled up, and we'll be posting them up shortly after this show. Um, let me move to my desktop real quick here, and uh, that's not as good as I'd hoped. What if I zoom in? I can't yeah. zoom you think so we should start there, just reviewing the results. Yeah, sure. Um, why don't we do it like? Is there a view zoom in thing? Aha, zoom. Oh, control numpad one. Excellent. Okay. We'll throw Ernest in there too. Oh, okay. like front and center. Yeah. All right. So, uh, we'll go through. Is this? Yeah, this is this is for today or from yesterday. So, the first uh, tournament that we ran was Street Fighter Cross Tekken. Um, we had a uh, pretty dedicated turnout, more so uh, less less than uh, before, but everybody who played was just very high level. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get much streaming out of that besides the winners, losers, and uh, grand finals. Um, so, uh, said 3s took first place. Rock, Rock, uh, I can't talk. Rock took second place, and Saber took third place. Um, right. So we had the privilege of commentating on those matches. Uh, do you have any, uh, I guess, uh, opinions that? Or um, insight that you had over that, over the I can't uh, talk overnight. <laughs> uh, about the results, they're not they're not surprising. I mean, you know, Rock and uh, Rock and Abe are really dedicated to the game, so that's like that's what they play. That like that's their main game. Mm -hmm. So it, like I said, the, the results don't surprise me at all. Um, I was a little sad to see that there were what there were only eight people. Yeah, so, I was trying to gl gloss over that a little bit, but yeah, yeah there were only eight people. It, it, it is what it is, though. I mean, it's just. Um, I don't know the, the the game itself. I think the game is is good. I just I, I don't know people just don't embrace it. it. It's one of those games where you like it or you hate it. I don't think there's a middle ground at all. So, Definitely. I, I was hoping that would change with the new update, but I don't know. People just have their preconceptions. Yeah, I think to... I think it's really easy to just say, but I like Street Fighter Four better, even though they're yeah. completely different games. And so it it hurts. Uh, it hurts this good game. It really does. Um, but so let me let me scroll down a bit. I have the season standings as well. Um, uh, for the most part, these the season standings have been uh, pretty consistent as far as Abe is concerned. Abe won the last round bat too, so he's up 14 points. Uh, Saber and Rock seem to be kind of tied to the point where we actually introduced the je double jeopardy rule last uh, this for this tournament, and we can talk oh. about that later too. Yeah, yeah, I want to touch on that actually. That, that uh, sure. seems important. Uh, but uh, so, you know, so Saber and Rock have been really uh, just neck and neck for a lot of this stuff, and uh, I think actually I have I have the results from last round bat too. So yeah, last week or two weeks ago rather, um, Rock actually lost to uh, Swoops or Sam, and so he only got three points out of that as opposed to Saber who got five points. So because of that, Saber's in a slight lead right there with one extra point over him. But uh, that was an instance where Saber actually got knocked into losers by Rock and then uh, beat him later on in losers. So right. uh, Swoops, uh, unfortunately, I don't believe he... Yeah, Swoops didn't perform as well as he did in the previous tournament, uh, but he's 
still been uh, relatively solid. He's been on top of the game for since release, honestly. Um, I think his first he's tournament I ever saw him enter, he got like second place right from the get-go. Yeah, he's one of the few dedicated Phoenix cross-second players, other than uh, uh, Saber, obviously. But, right. Um, yeah, that, that's his game. I mean, he, he would rather play that game over anything else. So I, I can understand why he places the way he does. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, another thing about this, the like, character choices uh, for this is, like, it's incredibly varied, particularly with Rock, who changes his team, like, every other every other blue moon or whatever. It's just, um, but, like, I don't actually see any doubles in this listing for this t uh, past top eight. I, like, oh, actually, I do oh, I see two Pauls. <laughs> for a, for oh, a, a yeah, yeah, sorry, for, for a, a, a game with where you have to pick two characters, there's surprisingly little, surprisingly little overlap uh, with these with our players here, and I find that to be pretty fascinating. I think the game itself allows for that, though. Um, is there, at least the way I see it, there's no bad teams in cross Tekken. I mean, you can put any two characters together and have a workable team, so it's pretty much your preference, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I definitely think that's the case. I think that there's definitely team synergy definitely exists, but it, there's a lot a lot of freedom and a lot of different options for characters. So this this might actually be a really good sign of a uh, good balance for the game. Uh, I think there, you you see some other characters used more more often, like Nina. Obviously, if you look. I mean, she's she's one of the more picked characters, but it's not like it's the game's not dominated by Nina. Mm. But good. So. Alrighty. Uh, so moving right along here. We have uh, Street Fighter 4 as our second tournament uh, of the day, and um, you actually made a pretty good appearance here with uh, second place. I, I left your whole nickname up here, just because. Oh, yeah. yeah, the uh, story behind that, I don't know if I should touch on it. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know if everybody knows what's going on, but it's, it's an inside joke, and I can explain it if people want to know. But, feel yeah. free, feel free. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's hear the cake story. Oh, the cake story, uh, it's, it's real, I'll keep it really short. It's just <laughs> something that happened. When we were going, uh, when I was playing online, for whatever reason, you get that inkling and you just, you know, you want something to do, so you play online. So that's what happened. And I just, I play Cammy, and people so don't like Cammy. It's a general, like, disdain for this <laughs> character, uh, especially online. So you get a lot of hate mail for mm -hmm. playing this character. And one of the messages I just happened to post up, somebody had said something about being a cake, and uh, uh, i trying to remember what it said. FFN stands for fuck, fuck, nigga. <laughs> and that's because that's what it said. So it was the most random message I ever got, and I just posted that up, and I just ran with it. So, yeah. <laughs> so now team he's. Cake. Yep, team cake. So and then, team. Somebody actually in the Arizona thread actually like they photoshopped like Sagat like, or Ryu uppercutting Sagat, and then like your, your cake is weak. You know. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the best thing ever. I think that's what made me make the team, made the name. Oh yeah. Oh that should, man. Oh, I gotta get that. You know what? That should be my uh, my icon. Your icon? <laughs> yeah, for uh, for Skype. <laughs> Very cool. I'm gonna get that. <laughs> so looking at the rest of these results here, we have Mr. SNK. He took first place with his Honda. Um, the, a first for the Spiral Series ran bats, but uh, not the, not a first for um, Arizona tournaments by any means. He's always performed very very highly in these each of these tournaments. Um, at the in the has bats before, he definitely uh, was he was in the running to win the last season, I believe. Um, uh, SNK. Mm -hmm. Mr. SNK. Yeah. And yeah, you've you've money matched him plenty of times as well. It seems like you guys are uh, pretty pretty close rivals, um, and uh, I uh, I was glad to see you guys duke it out in grand finals like that. Well, not not like that, like that, but yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get to that later. <laughs> I know, I know what you mean. Um, Luminaire also very uh, very consistent. Um, he, I've he's like he's constantly thrown up as like the top Phoenix AE player. Um, but he very rarely wins. I mean, oh, sorry. Besides SNK, um, but he very rarely uh, like places high. Like, he usually gets like fifth or top, maybe at least top eight. But I, I've, yeah. I've never even seen him win a tournament. But he's definitely worthy of it. Yeah, he fluctuates between that like three and five range. Cause I think he got third place the week prior or the the Rambat prior also. Mm. So it's um, man, that's the hardest thing to get over. I'll tell you because I was there for a while too, and trying to get over that hump and take first place, that's that's the most that's the most difficult step. Like it's easy to get to top eight. Well I don't say it's easy, but once you get to top eight, it's not that hard to push past it. But to push past 
the top five and actually win a tournament, I think that's the hardest thing to do. Hmm. Like mentally, like you, you just it all, everything has to be there. Right. Because yeah, especially with the competition the way it is, it's 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 absolutely necessary um, to have like a strong mental game along with the with the knowledge of the actual game, the engine itself. So yeah, and I, I think that like the 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 journey to top eight is uh. The journey to top eight can be really decided by who's like the better player, so you can overcome bad matchups by that way. But towards the end of it, like you actually run into some, like you can run into really bad matchups and char like players who are at the top echelon of that character that matchup as well. And so like fluctuation within top eight, I think can be because you know I think like Luminaire is a great example because he beats um, a lot of people. But he loses to Fei Long, like he loses to Nick all the time, or he used to lose to Nick all the time, and like he just had a bad matchup against that person. And so, like within top eight, it became a game of when would uh, when would Mike run into Nick in the bracket? Would he run into him when it, on, like on the way to th second or third place, or he run into him in top eight? You know, so right. it was kind of I think that you know, matchups and stuff like that. <laughs> um, but moving on, uh, we have. Uh, a couple new faces here. Uh, we have an oldie but a goodie, uh, Saber right there. But we also have uh, Thunder God, who I actually, um, I've I've met this guy. I don't, I'm not on a first name basis with him or anything, and I have no idea where he came from because I think he's pretty new this season. Uh, yeah. Well, he's uh, he's a Yuma guy. He's one of the, one of part of. Um, he's a Yuma group. guy. He he drove yeah, off from Yuma. No, no, no. He moved to Tucson, and he's going to school oh. there now. So he's he's Tucson now. Oh, so you, that's, that's he he's Tucson from. now. Okay. <laughs> did he, did he drive up with you guys? Uh, he drove up with Tyler and um. Okay. Yeah, Tyler, Tyler Aziz, and, and one of the other Yuma guys. Like I, I guess there are two of them that that moved down to Tucson, and he happens to be one of them. And I, I, I I'm sorry if you're watching. I forget the other guy's name, but um, yeah, they all drove up together. Okay. Very cool. Very cool. So now I have a better understanding of who this gentleman is, because I actually saw some people on the stream asking it for more matches of him. Um, oh, because uh, Sakura? Yeah, well, no, no, yeah, it's he... the particular that we want to see Thunder God play. Oh, because they, they don't know who he is. Okay, yeah, no, he's he's a, he's actually uh, he's a pretty decent player. It's just they don't have a very big scene up in Yuma, so mm -hmm. now that he came down here and he gets a chance to fight more people, he can kind of show off what he knows, but um, he's definitely in that learning process, so we're trying to teach him. I mean, we're, we're, and he, obviously, he's gotten pretty far in his own. So he's been with us for, I'd say, a month, maybe a little bit more. Okay. So not not too long. Very cool. So, uh, and then just to round out uh, the other new faces here, we have Jason, who's a, a Phoenix player. He's a student at ASU, um, and he's relatively new. Uh, but he got pretty far with Dudley, and he had some Zangief uh, counter picks as well. Um, and then uh, TL Kenshin, somebody from uh, Tijuana. Uh, <laughs> TL stands for Team Lago. <laughs> okay. He played a really nutty Blanca. It was pretty cool. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Man, I was, uh, I don't know. I, just, I couldn't explain it. It was all over <laughs> the place. But, it, I mean, it worked for him. It, it worked out in his favor. Yeah, I yeah. One match that it didn't, well, Thunder God is the one that took him out eventually. Mm -hmm. But, it, yeah, I mean, I couldn't. It was so hard to commentate that match because I have no idea what he's thinking as a box player. <laughs> just go, go oh, yeah, yeah. I remember a specific moment of, uh, it was Hop and then Crouch Roundhouse, just hop sweep. <laughs> I was like, whoa, he's he's in there. Um, so then we have Saber, who's uh, notice, notably not playing Sakura as much. He's just playing Cody. Um, I don't know if he's just being inverse to the top tier. Um, and then Kyo, 45, uh, Munchie's brother, uh, Kyle, uh, and he's playing Abel. Um, this gentleman plays many different games, actually. I think he was... Forgive me if this was actually Munchie, but I'm pretty sure he's into Skullgirls too. So like, he's all over like all over the place with the fighting games. Oh, he loves Tekken too. So it's it's good to see like a multi-game specialist come in, uh, particularly like not just a Capcom specialist, but like a multi-game specialist really come in and uh, do work in top eight there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he he used to play AE a lot. I thought like wasn't that his main game for a while? Um, not AE, super. I I, thought, you know, I like, I don't know because I know he moved here from Chicago a couple of years ago, but uh, okay. like I know I, be, I don't know I know Munchie was playing it pretty heavily for a while, and then yeah, uh, but I I don't I don't really know too much about Kyle's history in, with the game. Okay. So uh, scrolling down and looking at these uh, 
the season standings at least. Uh, you are actually in the lead here yes. because uh, you have placed consistently uh, second place each time. Um, Isaac, who uh, had a pretty strong performance with his Evil Ryu uh, last Rambat, uh, he didn't show up this time around, but he did win first. So he and Mr. SNK are tied, and then uh, Luminaire, who has shown up as well and gotten uh, third each time, he uh, also uh, is consistent, and so he gets second place there. Yeah. Um, and then we see the, the impact of the new faces jumping in here. TL Kenshin, um, I don't think he's going to be in the running to win the Ranbat just because he's probably not going to be at any of the, the remaining season, uh, the remaining tournaments of the season. Yeah. <laughs> um, but you see Jason on here, and Thunder God's made his mark as well, and even even Swoops and uh, Kyo are up here. <laughs> so. Can you, uh... Can you remind the stream what the um, what the ranking is for? Like what you win? Oh sure, yeah, yeah. So um, yeah, I've been throwing around the name Ranbat constantly. So Ranbat stands for Ranking Battles, um, and what that is is a we call, we we refer to it as a Ranbat season. So we have a series of five tournaments uh, that that uh, uh, turns into an overall season, and uh, based on your performance in that specific tournament, you are awarded points. Uh, so, for example, scrolling up here. Uh, Crazy EX got second place, so he won five points. And then uh, these points are all totaled throughout the season. And then at the end of the season, um, whoever has the highest number of points wins. Uh, and this is the prizes for that are determined by uh, it's it's basically a cash prize, um, or rather it's a it's a season pot. It's kind of there's a lot to explain with all that stuff, but basically a portion of the money that you spend on the the tournament that day goes to an overall Ranbat season pot, and whoever wins the season will win that pot. So, uh, hopefully that works out okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can deal with that. <laughs> um, so then, uh, let's move on to Marvel 3 here. Uh, Marvel 3, uh, the standings, for the most part, they seem fairly, uh, fairly consistent as far as our top three. Uh, the last Ranbat, we had uh, these same three gentlemen, except second and third place were switched. Uh, but Angelic, newly sponsored by Broken Tear, took first place uh, twice in a row. So he's uh, definitely showing some consistency there. Um, right. Yazawa, actually, he's a, uh, he, w he wasn't at the last Ranbat at all. And uh, to be completely honest, he's I haven't seen him place very high at many of the... Uh, uh, the, the previous Hasbat tournaments, and so it was really cool to see him jump up to fourth place immediately on this. Um, and then uh, I'm up here with Nam as well. Um, we both, to be completely honest, I think both of us played very poorly this tournament. Um, I expected Nam to be uh, up over here, but that's you know that's that 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 basically encompasses one match. Um, and then uh, Akbar, White Tower Aziz. Making his debut on the SSC Rambats as well, um, and uh, we got a lot to talk about as far as Aziz is concerned in, in the coming in the coming show here. Um, and Not Soy also taking top eight, um, very consistent with that too because he was in top eight last time. Ah. Uh, so let's go down to the season standings here. Um, Angelic having taken for first place for twice in a row, 14 points. Uh, Lorenzo and uh, Diego Fizzy Cups and Tubazo, uh, both have, they've been, they've swapped places each time, so now we're at nine points apiece. And same points, yeah. Yep. Um, Ninja Nam uh, placed pretty high the first time around, um, and then uh, won. He got fourth place last time, and then he got fifth place this time, so he's pretty up there. Uh, Wenster actually didn't make an appearance. Uh, oh my God, his drop combo is a pretty a new guy. Uh, he was at this last Rambat, but he didn't make top eight. Um, but he did r really well the previous one. And then uh, our buddy Akbar down here. Um, and so, yeah, I don't. Uh, do you have any uh, any opinions on the Marvel tournament there? Um, it's it's uh, a little bit different. Like you saw, well, the top three are always consistent, but it's nice to see the change. Um, so you can see players growing, which is what you want. Because then, um, I don't know, it just makes it more exciting. I think. So maybe eventually these guys um, will be able to challenge the top three and at least shake up the, the standings a little bit. So, no, it, it's definitely good to see the movement that these guys are having. 
Definitely. Well, I think, as far as the brackets go. I think that throughout all the games, and ex sadly, except for Cross Tekken, uh, for, so for AE and for Marvel, we've seen so many new faces pop up uh, and really make a dent in these top rankings here. Uh, and I agree, it's, it's good for the growth of the community for sure. Um, so let's see here. Uh, I'm trying to like see if we can keep the show about an hour or an hour and a half long. So let's move on okay. to like the next topic here. Um, okay. We are, let's see. I think maybe we should let the stream decide on this one. So we ha I have like two matches to show f for you guys today, and we're gonna just uh, basically go over what happened in those matches, um, and we're probably gonna see how like it works with Skype too. Um, <laughs> but uh, I have a Street Fighter Four match, and I have a Marvel vs. Capcom Three match. Um, which would you guys like to see first? And then also I have like this uh can this this video right here playing in the background just cuz it's like kind of like a sports center thing where there's like show <laughs> I don't know I thought that might be interesting I, when I first designed this layout I actually had two videos going at once and someone told yeah. me that that would be distracting as hell so uh, I I lowered it to one uh tell me you have sports center like um what do you call it the uh Transitions and stuff. Yeah, transitions, and we we can make little draw little diagrams. That'd be so awesome. I don't. I do have the ability <laughs> to draw diagrams, but I don't have the most. I have is just we transition to this, and then we set up set up the next thing. <laughs> so, uh, right. just because of the way Twitch works, I think if uh, we if I was using something besides like a live streaming thing, then I would definitely be able to incorporate uh, transitions. Okay. Um, I'll look into that though. We'll see what happens. That that'd be that'd be neat to have. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's see. Uh, we'll go into uh, Street Fighter 4 here. Everyone's saying Street Fighter 4. So, All right. uh, let's see. Let's get this set up. Um, oops. So I'll put you, put you down here. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, I'd like to present uh, Mr. SNK versus A Rod. Uh, so why don't we give a little bit of background information on these two players here? Uh, do you want to go first on, on uh, uh, describing them? I, as far as I know, well, obviously everybody knows Mr. SNK. He's probably one of the most consistent players in Phoenix. So I mean, it's Honda. That's what he uses. I haven't seen him use any bills in tournament. So he's definitely a character specialist. Um, and same thing goes for Aeroth. Like I haven't seen him use hardly anybody else, so he's definitely a character specialist also. So those are, to me, those are always the best matches because um, I don't know. There's just the depth of knowledge that you have with the character. It, it, it really shows on both parts. So uh, as we get in the match, you'll get to see. Uh, well, I, I guess it would be better to explain it as we see it. But um, yeah, sure. that's just my take on those two characters. I don't know how. Do you know how long aeroth has been playing? Because I just remember him from a couple of Rambats ago, but I don't know his history all that much. Sure, sure. So Alan is a, is actually a pretty good friend of mine. He and I started uh, playing fighting games, or rather, he and I started playing competitive Street Fighter at about uh, at the same tournament, or around the same time, I think. It was like one of the Rambats that Dorian ran a long time ago. This was before I even knew that there was a Tucson scene, and like, that there was like a streaming scene. Like, there was, uh, rather, that there was a... a a Street Fighter scene in general, um, and so I went, and it was my first tournament ever, and I met Alan there, and he's been playing Guile ever since, um, and his background is he's always played Guile in uh, Super Turbo, um, and uh, I don't know if you, I think he tried playing Remy in Third Strike, I, I don't really know too much else about uh, Alan's Street Fighter history, but he's a really cool dude, he's a, he's a musician, and uh, he... Uh, he volunteers at the Renaissance Fair. I don't know. I think I'm going too much in his personal life, <laughs> but uh, he's he, he's. It's really interesting watching him play because he's been playing the same character since Vanilla, uh, similar to uh, Mr. S and K. Actually, that's why that's what makes this match so great. Is these both these players have been playing since Vanilla these characters, and uh, and so you get to see how they've evolved since then. Uh, there's footage before of like, of, you know, Mr. S and K like not knowing how to do hands or something. I don't know. I, like, I'm sure there is footage. I actually haven't seen anything of that. But I have seen footage of Alan being a total scrub at the beginning. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, 
he's uh, definitely come a long way since then, and uh, one of his big weaknesses was anti-errors, um, and so I'd like to move forward with that. Um, okay. So I'm going to go ahead and start the match. Uh, because there's a delay on the stream, uh, you're probably going to have to call something out to me, and I might have to rewind it and everything like that, so just let me know uh, okay. what happens. So, what's your opinion on the the Honda versus Guile match? Um, it's definitely Guile's favorite. Like, six, uh, easy six four. Some people said seven three back when Guile was overpowered, but not so much now. But um, as you're watching the match, you'll see the strengths that Guile has, and A Rod. Uh, A Rod does a good job, I guess, in the beginning of using it, and uh, SNK just starts to go nuts. Like you'll see him trying to get in because he knows once Kyle establishes his game that it becomes much, much tougher mm -hmm. as a Honda player <laughs> to get anything. I've, so. I've never seen him go quite as ham as he always, like, as he is, he, he, normally he's a lot more patient, uh, but this guy, like, SNK in this particular match is just, he's like, I'm going to butt slam, I'm going to butt slam, do I have a charge yet? Uh, no, I'm going to wait, and then I'm going to butt slam. <laughs> like, yeah. there's just, he was in there at all costs, like, he had to be. Um, and uh, one thing Alan was doing was, he, Crouch Fierce. Crouch fierce, crouch fierce. Yeah, everything, oh everything. my god, it was so good. Like, oh, and then every now and then he would anti air. It, like he he anti aired so cleanly with that crouch fierce, and then he did the jump fierce uh, to end the round for round one like that. Um, and so like, I can understand SNK's desire to stay in, um, but it looked like Allen was had was doing a pretty good job countering that with the anti airs. Yeah, and that's what Guile has to do. I mean, he wants that space. Like, uh, right now when, like, when I see him throw him in the corner, um, you want to back off. Like, he's trying to put the pressure on, mm -hmm. and I think as Guile, you just want all that real estate behind you. Like, you want to make Honda walk forward because you're taking away his charge. So, and then what, what Honda's not half as scary when he's walking forward, at, at least in my opinion, if right. you're a cop. Right, right. Yeah. Well, well, that's another thing is, be, like, when he, when he, not only does he not have a charge, but he hasn't, he doesn't have really have bar. I've noticed that he's been doing, doing a lot of like ex, uh, ex butt slams and then FADC stuff, um, and so or I'm talking about specifically about SNK and Honda. Right. So like he didn't really have any ex headbutts available to him. So A Rod really didn't need to be scared as far as throwing fireballs unsafely or, or, going for tick throws or anything like that because there was no ex headbutt to really threaten him. And part of that, too, is understanding SNK's mentality as far as the, how he approached a street fighter. Mm -hmm. And he, he was just going absolutely nuts to see if he could break A-Rod. Right. And you know, I, I'm not going to respect you. I'm going to keep doing this, see how you deal with it. If you can't handle it, good for me. If not, I'm willing, I'm willing to lose the game. Basically. Yes, yeah. So. And that was exactly what happened for this, uh, this particular match. So jumping into the second match here. Uh, so Alan took that one, and, I, like, again, like... It, <laughs> I was just so surprised, like to be completely blunt. Like I, I've known Alan for a long time, and I've I've never seen him truly win against SNK, um, and like that match, like I was very proud of him to do so. No, no, it was, it was a good, it was a good match. The second round when it starts, and and I, I said something about it while I was commentating is that his sonic booms weren't as good as well placed as they were in the first one. So you, you'll see SNK getting a lot of jump ins, and uh, mm -hmm. they just. You know, if you get hit by Honda when he's jumping in, that, that, that hurts pretty bad. Right. And, and Guile's not exactly a, a character that can come back or is not designed for comebacks. So it, it's really tough for him to take back the life lead. And I think that's so absolutely important in a match like this is to have the life lead. Because Definitely. whoever does it best dictates the game. Definitely. Um, so right now I'm actually seeing uh, SNK sitting on a full super here. So that's contrary to my, my previous statement about him being low on bar at all times. But... Uh, for the most part, like, Guile isn't doing any aggressing, really. He's just trying to keep him out at all times. And right now, he's, he's stuck in the corner. Um, but shortly afterwards, he just jumps straight out. Like, I right. think that because of the way SNK was aggressing with his offense, he had to really, um, like, it, there's just enough holes for <laughs> A-Rod to just jump out. Um, another thing that I find incredibly fascinating is because of the way he's playing, he doesn't have to worry about Alan's signature random flash kicks where that gentleman will flash kick anything <laughs> if he's waiting for it. Like, I, like, uh, I didn't see any, though. Like, in this match, I don't Ooh. remember seeing one. 
Oh man. There was man. some on reaction, but he never did one just to do it. Yeah, he's like he's that's because like SNK really never gave him a shot for the block strings. <laughs> like he like there was never a hole. There was never a block string to find a hole in to flash kick through. But by the way, I, he just did anti air with stand forward. Like, oh, Alan. that's an amazing anti air too. By the way. Oh, um, Alan. <laughs> <laughs> Jump back roundhouse anti air. Oh my goodness. And I so think being, being a guile player, it's understanding what button to use in what situation. But so earlier you mentioned that Guile's not built for comebacks, so that I think is what makes this comeback this round so wonderful. Yes. I remember this round too, and I was like, it was, I was heartbroken. Like this part right here, we block super. Yep. If he had done each flash kick, it's four frames, and that super is negative five, I believe, negative five. So he would have won, but he did regular flash kick, which I don't know the frames on regular flash kick, but um, it just he got beat. So either he was a frame or two too late, mm -hmm. or if he just used EX, he, he would have taken that round. Mm -hmm. So it's that's that says something about like I wonder how much that really affected his mental state there where he felt like he got robbed. I think the fortunate thing there was uh, that he that it, it was only like he would have had to win another round anyway, so maybe it didn't break his spirit or anything. Like looking at this here, it, it still looks like uh, A Rod's playing the match uh, to match his offense accordingly. Like I see the focuses against the the uh, butt slams. I see the wow, well, you just flash kicked a butt slam. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was pretty good. I, uh, yeah, I'll give credit for that. That was pretty amazing. Oh, man. He baited the... Oh, my gosh. Like, like that's the thing about Gu uh, Guile right here, is, or Alan's particular choice in not keeping him in the corner and not pressuring him, because he, like, SNK had two bars to, to headbutt any, uh, any, like, holes in uh, Guile's offense, so rather than stay and keep him in the corner, he, like, backed out right away and just jumped away and did whatever. I think that's the general game plan, or that's probably the best game plan. You don't really, you don't really need to pressure Honda in the corner. I mean, your pressure as Guile is walking backwards, mm. because then Honda has to walk forwards, and that gives you everything you need as a Guile player to right. be able to get those little victories. Because it's all about, um, I guess, yeah, by winning by those little victories, and then that wins you the entire match. So, yeah, like he backs up. Guile has charge. Honda has to walk forward. Honda does not have charge. Like it's automatically. Uh, the neutral game is in Guile's favor, just automatically. <laughs> oh dang! But <laughs> there's there's just a ton of like command grab setups too, because like SNK is definitely reading the fact that Guile wants to block and just wants to get away, so he's gonna be holding back. He wants he's gonna be inclined to use his charge. Oh, crouch fierce! Yeah, that move <laughs> is so good. It's so good. Oh man. Um, but uh, you can see um, SNK, he just. He doesn't want to give up, like, or give up uh, the space. So, or let uh, Guile get to that space where it makes it even more difficult. So he's willing to just rush in and burn away his life trying to get in. And, and you know, that's, I mean, that that's his play style. Whether or not that's the best play style or not, I mean, it's, he won, so you can't say anything about it. But <laughs> Spoilers, <laughs> man. Spoilers. Yeah. Well, everybody knew. I'm sorry. <laughs> nah, I <laughs> get you. I spoiled it. But, um, yeah, it worked out for him. He's definitely willing to take as many chunks of damage as possible. Oh, right, right, right there, by the way, just EX headbutt is some it, pressure. It just turns it, like, see, at the very end, it just turns into this, um, uh, I don't know, it, it kind of, it's, it's a little bit ugly looking, just because there's reversals everywhere, and nobody's respecting anybody, and it's um, it's an all-or-nothing type of game. So it, it's it, it, that's the type of gameplay that SNK wanted. I don't know if he felt like that's the way to play against A-Rod in general, mm -hmm. but... Um, it's definitely out un unorthodox. It's out of the ordinary. That's not, not normally how you see that match played. But it worked out for SNK, and, and, and you know, credit, credit to him for, for overcoming that because that's a tough match. So I mean, a lot of credit to him for being able to take him out like that or take Aaron out like that. Oh, definitely. I, I think that uh, like I th the first my first words with Nico right after that match was that was a giant slugfest. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it was, just, it was a slugfest. Like they were just going at it. R very little regard for their own safety just like i'm gonna hit you i'm gonna hit you back i'm gonna i'm gonna get hit while trying to hit you and it's just that was nutty um so yeah do you have any final thoughts on the matchup there um i think it, it, i think it, it was definitely aaron's game to take i just i don't know if he got flustered by snk's crazy craziness at the very end but um i think at least in that matchup, I mean, I, I think he can do a little bit better job of just keeping Honda out. Like, I, I like the idea, the ideas that he had, just the execution was a little bit lacking in, 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 of the game plan, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. 
but um, you de definitely some good stuff there. I just 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 tighten up the gameplay, and I think it'll be all right. I think you, you'll actually. It, it, I don't know how often A Rod practices, but <laughs> I mean he can uh, he can get there. I mean he can he can he, he can get there if he, if he tries. I mean, for me, it was like because Alan and I've known him for so long and like I, he's a peer of mine that we've just kind of grown as fighting game players together uh, seeing these like little improvements in his play like being able to anti-air particularly well he like he was never strong in combos either like I could never see him do a cancel <laughs> uh, but he, he actually tried a, a stand jab and a stand fierce link um, yeah, yeah. and I thought that I've was pretty before, cool yeah the, the gameplay that I've experienced or what I've seen before in previous rounds that's is definitely night day so uh, yeah credit, credit to Aaron Yep. Stepping up a little bit. Definitely. So, uh, with that, let's move on to uh, our next uh, our next match here. This is going to be uh, a Marvel match. Okay. Let's see. Let me get all this set up here. Yeah. Ironing out the kinks again. This is the pilot episode, ladies and gentlemen. So. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to try to do my very best here to get this ironed out. So, oh, actually, let me refresh that. Um, so this Marvel match uh, is also a relatively high level one. I'd like to present to you guys uh, RJC, has RJC Tubuzo versus SSC Ninja Nam. Um, this is actually at the request of Ernest, because you wanted me to look at one of Nam's matches, right? <laughs> yes, and this one actually, I I didn't catch the entire one, so I'll, I'll be, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to see uh, how this breaks down. Sure. So, but I'll, I'll definitely ready to give my opinion. Okay, uh, so let's let's do the same thing here and go over some background information on the players. Um, do you have any particular like particular experiences with uh, Lorenzo or Nam that you'd like to recount? <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I mean, I... I I've fought uh, Twaza plenty of times, and it's just, he's one of those guys that's one of my demons right now in Marvel, just mm. because I I, uh, I don't think I've beaten him in tournament yet. We don't meet that often in tournament, to be honest with you, but I just haven't beaten him yet. Lorenzo, so he, oh, sorry, go ahead. Right. Okay. So I was just going to say, he's got one of those teams that's very unorthodox, and his play style is not... Um, it, it, it's different. I don't know how to explain it. It's just different. <laughs> Definitely. So. Um, he's uh, So Lorenzo is a... Uh, He's a Blaze Blue player. He's uh, he won uh, Devastation for Blaze Blue uh, at the last Devastation, um, and uh, he got first place. And he's been pretty dedicated to that game. I think that he's like the equivalent of, I guess, like for for everybody who started Street Fighter Four in '09, like an '09er, like he's a Blaze Blue '09er. Oh, sorry, twice in a row. Oh crap! My bad, Lorenzo. He's in the chat right now. <laughs> oh, <okay. laughs> My bad, dude. You won twice in a row. Oh, I don't mean to trivialize your achievements. Yeah, holy cow, that's really awesome. He's an Arakune player, um, and even in even in that game too, like he Arakune as a character just has a very very different and unique style. And I've heard Lorenzo talk about uh, his philosophy on Blaze Blue multiple times, and he's just very passionate about that game um, and and playing that character. Um, with Marvel in particular, his team is just known for being a uh, a bad team. Like his team has very little synergy with one another, besides the fact that Firebrand and Arthur are in the same game. <laughs> um, like Firebrand, uh, Firebrand's a very specific character where he needs to have like lockdown uh, tools to take advantage of his unblockables, and he needs an assist that will really help cover his aerial neutral game. Um, uh, so like, and I'm like. <laughs> By saying it's a bad team, I, I mean that the team itself is not uh, optimized in design. Um, on it on paper, like it, if, if you take a team, if mm -hmm. you construct a team and put it together, I, I don't think anybody would put these three characters together. Definitely, definitely. Like you look at you look at Firebrand and you outline his strengths on paper, and you say, "What do I have? What assists are possible in this game to accentuate Firebrand's strengths?" And Arthur and Hulk are not on that list, um, right. but. In Lorenzo's case, though, he makes good use of the Hulk assist. Uh, it's an armor. It's basically a get off me. It's an armored assist that pops him straight up. Sadly enough, there's not much combo opportunity off that, so you could consider that kind of balanced. Um, and then Arthur as anchor, uh, where you will primarily find Arthur <laughs> as an anchor yeah. character, but just known to be a bad character. Um, he's capable of X Factor comebacks just like any other character in the game, but uh, 
he uh, just he's mediocre on so many different fronts. Uh, he has no double jump, no very no uh, no jump really. That's no rather he has a jump, but he has no double jump, no air dash, no ground dash. <laughs> uh, he's just an interesting character, but not very effective in the current uh, uh, scheme of the game, I guess. Yeah. So let, let me ask you, since you, I mean, you, you obviously uh, get a chance to play with him a lot, and mm -hmm. uh, I am, you're more in tune with the Marvel community in general, just because Phoenix just has a larger portion of it. Sure. Um, but what what do you think that sets him apart that allows him to take a team like this and get consistent results like he's been doing this past round at? So like, uh, player. You know? Definitely. Uh, so, so what I I think that what Lorenzo does is that he, by playing this unorthodox team, he has to uh, basically take the bag over, t take the bag, turn it over, and shake it out, and basically find anything you can get, any kind of any kind of straws that he can grasp at to to find to be powerful. So he's actually developed this team quite quite well. Um, he has uh, so he's got he's got the resets with Arthur, um, like. Or rather, with the resets with Firebrand, where most teams that are optimized will kill in one hit, particularly the Firebrand teams utilizing unblockables. But he will. Uh, does Arthur, Arthur does have a double jump? I take that back. Sorry, sorry, I suck. Um, but going back to so if Firebrand lands a hit, and and uh, with Lorenzo's case, he can't kill. Uh, but he's got the resets optimized where he can use Arthur's assist to lock down and do all this other funny stuff with it. Um, so. What I think Lorenzo has done is he's just turned his team inside out and really gotten to the core understanding of each of his characters and how they synergize with each other. They don't synergize well, but he knows how they synergize at the very least. Um, and that, coupled with his uh, his style of firebrand, is very um, it's aggressive, it's unpredictable, it's um, it's a very much a kind of a wild card, and he, he plays it that way on purpose. Um, I've talked to him multiple times where I've asked him why he does certain things, and he's like, I think it, it, a lot of it is based on reads, and because of the results that he's been getting with it, his reads are correct. <laughs> so yeah. I think that he's just he's definitely taking it very far with uh, his player mentality as well. Okay, fair enough. All right. And then uh, what about Nam? I know Nam... I, I don't know. I just I, I haven't seen much of him, and then all of a sudden he's in what top top eight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Nam's my homeboy. Uh, so Nam right. is uh, Nam's kind of an interesting case because he kind of showed up out of nowhere uh, in the fighting game scene in general. Like he just showed up one day, and we were like, "Who are you? I mean, why are you my friend?" Like because he was we were just like, "Yeah, we've known Nam for forever," and then we were like, "Wait." When did we actually meet Nam? We don't remember meeting Nam. We just always thought he was there. Uh, so like Nam has. He's just like the guy of like he's he's always been a surprising person, a surprising player. Um, recently, he's been training very very hard with Angelic, uh, and uh, that's I th I think that's honestly the very big key for what his his spike in growth. Um, another big spike in growth is the fact that he dropped Iron Fist. <laughs> his old team was Iron Fist, Spencer, Doctor Strange, which without a doubt is the most uh, powerful Iron Fist team because. Uh, you can get Flames of the Fall team leaps off of uh, Iron Fist because he's got a crumple yeah. move. Um, but uh, it's Iron Fist. And, like, <laughs> so me in particular, I would just walk all over him with zero <laughs> against Iron Fist. <laughs> like, this, like they're just matchups that he's just not going to win. He's just not yeah. good enough to win. Um, any any character with aerial presence or whatever. So he, he, sw uh, he dropped Iron Fist and he put Nova on the team. And uh, the... Sudden spike is him realizing how to play Nova and how to play his team and how to hit his combos correctly. So what Nam has turned into is basically an optimized uh, Nemo team where I'm going to hit you, I'm going to kill you, and I'm going to build four bars for myself uh, along the way, and then I'm going to repeat the process. Yep. <laughs> and then when, when that doesn't work, like his basic game plan is when that doesn't work out, Spencer comes in, and Spencer is his best character. And I, he has four bars to work with to bionic arm you to death. <laughs> so uh, I think it's um, so as far as how Nam has like shown up out of nowhere and suddenly getting fourth and fifth place. Like he's been training hard. Uh, he's starting to utilize this team, or he switched to this team, and he's starting to use utilize the team to its maximum potential. Okay, fair enough. Cool. So uh, we kind of spent a little bit extra time talking about our players here, but let's move into the match. Um, I actually did not catch most of this myself, so 
Um, I do know the outcome, and I do I did see like little bits and pieces of it while I was running around. Uh, so this is going to be a surprise for both of us. <laughs> so I would imagine that um, this would probably be pretty tough for Firebrand, at least as far as um, staying away from Nova, because Nova has pretty good air mobility, and that um, everywhere he's dashing is right in the space I, I feel like uh, Firebrand wants to be in. Right. So... And like, like that. <laughs> yeah, it is his, uh, you know, his jump H is basically an ability to swat Firebrand out of the sky, and his stand right. jab is really good to anti-air Firebrand, which is exactly what happened, and it led to this, the Flames of the Fall team loops, which Nam um, sadly drops, but, uh... <laughs> which, uh, by, by the way, how hard are those to do? I've, I have, I've never tried it myself, so I don't know what the execution um, error is to be able to do those. I am under the On impression... On a scale of 1 to 10, if you would say. Uh, ten being combo video and one being like basic like, ABC combo. ABC exactly. I would call it a six, which okay. is actually pretty hard still because when you when you think about it in terms of tournament practicality, it's actually pretty hard. Like I would actually say it's harder than lightning loops are, if anybody wow. has if you want if you want to use it as a reference. Um, so I pause the video here real quick just to to notice that <laughs> Nam dropped the combo. Um, and Lorenzo's bad, unfortunate habit is is to uh, mash on Hulk to, as a get off me, yep. right? And what happened <laughs> is uh, Hulk got hit by the dropped combo, <laughs> and it really wrecked the shit out of him. And then Nam capitalized on that and burned another bar, which his team can yeah. do because he built up a ton doing the fall team loops. And I, I think that's one thing players should realize, and that's uh, uh, about that Hulk assist is when he comes out, he's as soon as he's in the air, like you can hit him. And anytime you try to an assist, you get a hard knockdown. Mm -hmm. So you can pick Hulk back up. So if, if um, like you, you can expose that, like that's something that you can use against Sabazo if that's something that you realize. Yeah, you can and, uh, bait it essentially. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And then you can take because uh, uh, Hulk has so much life anyway. Even if you can get a fraction of that off, since he's an assist when he comes in, that's probably you can probably kill him a lot easier without having to worry about it. But um, yeah, I mean, that, yeah, that, that's a great example now. Uh, Tabazo has Hulk with virtually no life. He's left with um, he's left with Arthur, and he was okay with throwing Hulk out there because he realizes that Arthur level three is probably what he's going to have to use to make a comeback. Definitely. But um, credit to Nam for finishing off uh, Arthur the way he did, so just prevented that from happening. Yeah, yeah. I think Arthur versus Spencer is heavily in Spencer's favor because all he has to do is twitch react and you know go through and bionic arm. But Nam gets the first hit on this next match too as well. Um, I, I, a lot, again. Just uh, stopping Firebrand right in his tracks. Yep. It's just it's a fly swatter. <laughs> <laughs> they call that the dolphin kick. So I don't remember if Nom hits this combo, but I think he's going to. Yeah. Oh, See, wow. It's so, <laughs> Never it's mind. So, it's so meter efficient. Just look at the, the bar that he builds. Yeah, definitely. He, he didn't even need to burn a bar to kill him. And now you have plenty to kill off Hulk. It's mm -hmm. just it's ridiculous. Like This team, like, uh, Nemo said this was the best team in the game, which I don't... I don't agree with, but it's definitely a very strong team. Yeah, it's 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 its biggest weakness is that it's incredibly straightforward. Uh, but the straightforwardness is what's really hard to beat. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. Like Nova's gonna come in and he's gonna call bolts and he's just gonna do his thing. <laughs> like you can't stop it. Because if you try, he's gonna he's gonna swat you out of the air like poor Lorenzo had to deal with there. And uh, it's just it's just a very impressive game plan. But uh, that being said. Uh, Lorenzo is still pretty good with his Hulk and gets the grab and goes for the. I kill. like that uh, that pickup. I didn't know you could pick up mid screen like that. I didn't know either. Like f particularly with that with the uh, the up super, like that was pretty nutty. See, and this is smart X factoring Spencer, and it, it's probably him knowing that uh, that that's not his best character like you're mentioning before. So he wants to get rid of him as quickly as possible. Mm -hmm. And then I don't. I don't understand what that super was. Maybe it's just trying to be meaty, just make sure that Nam doesn't come in and super right away. Yeah, I was kind of curious about that myself. I'm like, what his mentality in doing that was. Maybe he can answer because he's in the chat right now, but I think it's just a way to like avoid getting mixed up on their incoming. <laughs> Which yeah, is... well, Hulk doesn't really have an incoming, so... Um, right, right. Just really a bit... um, and in this match, it seems like it would be bad for Arthur, too. Oh, yeah, Which... definitely. It's, it seems like a twitch, but... um, Like... I feel like Arthur has a better, like, he's got a better close range game, which is kind of stupid when it sounds like, when I say it like that, but if if Arthur gets in with the overhead stuff, which Lorenzo is really, really good at, like, I don't ever see any Arthur players do, like, the jump instant overheads. Um, 
But Strange doesn't really have much besides, you know, impact palming it. I, I don't even know how effective an impact palm is on such a small character. Um, good question. Oh, you just knocked him out of the super, too. Wow, okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, that was a, that was a funny moment right there when um, this happened. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. I didn't know who was going to win for a second. I'm yeah, no, nobody know. did. That's what was so crazy. Like, you know, uh, Doctor Strange, Doctor Strange super fully... I want to use the word procs, but I, I think that's incorrect fighting game lingo. But it really it it went through, whereas Arthur's got stopped midway as soon as he got hit. So that sucked for that's, that sucked for Lorenzo there. But uh, I notice you notice here how he switches to Hulk. Yeah. Rather than Firebrand, I've actually never ever ever seen him do that before. Um, uh, maybe it's to stop that jump, like we were talking about that jump H. Like he's just um, he's basically abusing that against Firebrand, and you can't really do that against Hulk because he's got armor. Mm -hmm. So that would be that would be what I would think his reasoning would be. And it's actually and good. Oh, go ahead. No, I was gonna say good good job to them for uh, snapping in Arthur, because that's um, once you get rid of that, this team becomes a lot less more scary, a lot less scary, because then you can just kill the team in any order. <laughs> so Lorenzo in the chat saying here, uh, I start Hulk when I feel frustrated. <laughs> 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 I guess that's one way to do it. Um, but it looked like it worked out pretty well here because he actually took out uh, Nam's primary assist after bringing Firebrand in and scaring Nova enough. Basically, what he did was he took away the Strange, and then it was okay for Firebrand to move around against Nova. Yeah, that, that's the like you were mentioning before. That's one of the biggest drawbacks of that team. You lose any part of it, and the team is significantly less powerful. Mm -hmm. It's it's incredibly straightforward in that regard. It's this is this is this is the package that you get. You take away any ingredient, and it's like, eh. <laughs> but uh. Well, wow, Firebrand could just really run away from Spencer like that? Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't see Spencer having much of a air presence to a giant gargoyle that's swooping around the screen. Yeah. <laughs> it has a wall cling. <laughs> that's pretty nutty. Um, now, is it side-specific, or uh, the, the wall cling? Uh, or you can do it on either end? Oh, you can do it on either end. I actually don't think there are any, uh, any, character, uh, any wall clings that are side-specific in this game. I, I remember reading that somewhere. Maybe it's some glitch. Who knows? <laughs> so Lorenzo takes his first game, and he's clearly seeing that the uh, the uh, assist the the starting Hulk is working. And like, like wow, he went for a TAC. Like uh, you notice though that he's the. Oh, what? Really? No, I'm sorry. I was, I was a little bit behind. Oh right, right, right. He got hit and then went for THC. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's one thing about Hulk's uh, neutral game is his dash goes through people, and that's kind of a weird way to cross up. But uh, now I'm doing the bionic arm from the get go gets away with it. I just like <laughs> like the the in, the weird thing about this is like even though we mentioned earlier that if you lose one part of the team that it's not as strong like Spencer with Strange is still super super strong. It's not going to 100% kill everybody uh and it meter positive like Nova Stra Nova Spencer Strange will, but no, like Spencer with bolts is just that's nutty. <laughs> More TACs. Yeah, no, it could be worse. Like it, it could definitely be worse. I remember Tabazo told me one time he has Hulk Infinites. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's probably trolling, but if there is Hulk Infinites, that'd be amazing. I'm told that there's a specific... Like, the stars have to align in order for that infinite to be possible, let alone practical. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I'm doing pretty good work here. He's he's known to burn X-Factor with Spencer, just because like he recognizes how strong that shell is. Um, but he's not getting as much mileage oh, about, oh. out of it anymore. <laughs> And, uh, uh, yeah, that's a strength of Hulk. And just hit that H. Yep. <laughs> and, yeah, puts him in a pretty pretty good position. But, you know, you have to know when to hit it. It's not something you can just throw yep. out there. And, yep. And uh, that's one of the things that I, I give credit to, to Bazo for is, you know, he just seems to know when to hit that button. Yep. Um, I think that it's definitely not necessarily an execution barrier, but it's, def it's a player barrier. It's a neutral game barrier. Um, <clears throat> but, uh, what was I gonna say? Like Hulk, uh, on paper, you know he's gonna start Hulk because Nova only Nova doesn't have like multiple hit moves, you know. But uh, against Strange and Nova, like he's gonna get tagged out of the H every time, and I think that's uh, so. That's, there's definitely some placement involved there. But he could also like gamma charge through it and stuff. Uh, yeah, in any number of things he can do. But um, I'm yeah, not... and, like I said, just knowing when to use those tools, I mm -hmm. think the boss does a good job. It's a, it's a smaller toolbox by sure, for sure, but uh, it's by design. Uh, but 
knowing how to use it, how how and when to use those tools is what makes that character pretty powerful. So anyway, they went back to the character select screen, I think, to get a breather, maybe to throw on some new duds. <laughs> and I uh, again, he's just starting Hulk. Again, I've never seen Lorenzo really fully start Hulk like this. Um, Which normally that's what you see him at. I mean, not Tabazo, but uh, Hulk players in general. He's always on point. Yeah, like Hulk should be a point character because his assists are relatively lackluster. Oh wow, cuts that through was it. a ton of damage. Jeez. Yeah. So, I think that, I feel like the momentum just in general with Nom, like, he, he kind of just lost his spirit. <laughs> like, oh, man. You know, it's demoralizing, though. You get hit by that H, and you're like, you, you, you question yourself. You're like, is it because I made a bad read and I, I wasn't doing the right thing, or is Basel really that codlike that he just knows when to hit a button? So. <laughs> Fair enough. Um. But not just not just this particular game in that particular instance. But he's he's lost two games in a row now. Like the momentum just really has been shifted in Lorenzo's favor, and that shows with this game. That said, going down to the wire, <laughs> like yeah, he, did, he did a pretty good job fighting back. Um, but I I I th I remember seeing the end of this match, and I was like, I think it's over by the time by the time when I saw Arthur with X Factor come in in five bars, I was like, I think it's over because he can just do level three like that. And it'll be. I mean, I think that uh, Strange can do the projectile super, but oh, <laughs> or, or to counter that, uh, does that work? Uh, it is. I think it is considered a projectile, the fire dragon special. But uh, okay. but yeah. So uh, Lorenzo ended up taking that in a relatively close set. I stopped the video on a particularly unflattering picture of Diego, our commentator. <laughs> oh man! <laughs> Somebody make a meme out of that, please. <laughs> Fizzy cups, please. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, I, uh, I don't know. I feel for Nam because he's been putting in so much work and it has been improving so rapidly. I, uh, I just, uh, I don't really know. It, it's, it, it was a really yeah. close match for sure. <laughs> There's that. It's that mental barrier I was talking about before. It's getting, getting past that and getting down on yourself. You when you you're up two games. You just lost two. I mean, it's really easy to slip into that area where you're like, "Oh man, I'm about to lose," and mm -hmm. um, you start second guessing what you were doing before because it, it didn't work out for you in the last couple games. And um, right there, that that's what separates the the first place and, and everybody else. <laughs> right. Being able to overcome that. Yep. Yeah. The, the mental fortuity for is it fortuity? Is that even a word? But it's like the mental strength that you the fortitude, fortitude. That's the word. Mental fortitude that comes with uh, playing the games like that. Um, and that's honestly that's what I think out of state experience provides a lot. Um, is sure. just being nervous in a in a, a state that you've never been in, or or like just not being like the, like people run into that to varying. To, I can't talk. People run into that to varying degrees. Like, when you're making the transition from being an online player to a real-life player, um, like, you're out of your comfort zone. Um, and then people... It's intimidating, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, and then people think that that ends there, but in reality, then you travel out of state, and it's an analogous situation. It's pretty much the same situation where you're like, well, now I'm all nervous again because I don't know anybody, and everyone's cheering against me, <laughs> you know? Like, <laughs> that, that kind of stress gets to you, too. So, um... Yeah, I just I hope to see more uh, like strong performances from Nam. I hope Lorenzo still holds it down and keeps pushing him. Um, and yeah, just solid performance by both players right there. It it didn't seem to be a really messy match at all. Like it wasn't there it wasn't filled with drop combos or nobody won because they shouldn't have won. It just felt like a very clean, strong match. Right. I mean, there were adjustments on both sides. Lorenzo was down 2-0 and he, he made the comeback. So mm -hmm. that, that says something about how he plays. Yep. Yep. So. uh Moving right along here, the the show has lasted for about an hour. Um, I actually don't know how long this show. I never intended to like have a set end time for the show, so I'm just gonna we're gonna keep powering through and get through the rest of this agenda here. Um, so the big uh, the big event for this Ranbat was not just the tournaments, but also the fact that we had out of state visitors come. Uh, we had uh, Actually, yeah, that does kind of tie into our previous topic, where uh, we had people travel from 
technically another country to come play us in Arizona. They came from Tijuana. Uh, we had ties with uh, one of our players who moved out to Tijuana a couple months ago, Charging Star Ryan, um, and he brought back a whole Tijuana army. Um, and for the record, uh, I had the hardest time pronouncing the the name Tijuana, Tijuana, because like Tijuana. I want to, I, I want to put an A in there, like T I A, and then Wana, and then I got yelled at by Armando because then it sounds like I'm saying Aunt Wana, because Tia, <laughs> Tia is aunt in Spanish. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, so man. like, so then I started, say, I started calling it Tijuana, and that just sounds really awkward because you got to put the like the the silent H in there, like Tijuana or something. I don't know. It just sounds. <laughs> I suck at this kind of stuff. <laughs> But um, anyway, we had uh, people from Tijuana come, and we uh, the the format was a uh, 4v4 exhibition, and uh, we wanted to give uh, a lot of our Marvel players a chance to play them and have their time in the spotlight. So in addition to giving them our best players, uh, we, we had a Team B run as well. Um, for the purpose of this show, we're going to look uh, particularly at the... Uh, the exhibition against their best players, or against our best players, sorry. So we had a team of four players. Um, it was Angelic, uh, ch -ch -ch Angelic, Lorenzo, uh, Tubazo, who you just saw in the video, who's actually playing right over there. Um, uh, White Tower Fizzy. Aziz uh, and uh, Fizzy Cups Diego. So, um, and then we had a bunch of uh, Tijuana players who, unfortunately, I don't recall their names. I know T.L. Kenshin was there. Uh, we talked about him in the results earlier, and a bunch of other uh, players. Um, and uh, suffice to say, like, I'm okay with just giving away the ending right now. Uh, we started off with uh, our player, uh, White Tower Aziz, um, who is a Tucson player um, and uh, a Kuwait player uh, who... But yeah, he headed off our, our Arizona team, and he OCV'd them just clean. So um, what I'm going to do, rather than uh, break down every single individual match, uh, I'm going to put I'm going to leave this screen up here and put the matches on this little thing, because I, I don't necessarily want to talk about uh, like how he played the matches, but I want to talk about Aziz as a player, because um, I think that he's one of... He's probably the most underrated Arizona player. Uh, we don't see him very much uh, as far as uh, talks of, like, the best players. Um, Aziz is... Uh, actually, let's do this before we, we, we start talking about that kind of stuff. We have a section on our, on our show now um, that I'd like to do every show uh, called a player spotlight. And uh, so... Picture. <laughs> I took I took it from his Facebook and I didn't ask him. Sorry, Aziz. <laughs> um, but uh, this is yeah, this is Facebook. He's doing the gravity squeeze thing. Um, and uh, Ernest, part of the reason, like one of the one of the like the main reasons why I wanted to have you on the show today was to uh, because you're his primary training partner, and it'd be I thought it'd be really cool to get your perspective on this. So it's like cool, yeah. So Aziz is a um, again he's he's a player from Tucson and Kuwait, um, and he I believe he represents Arcade in the Box and uh, White Tower more more so White Tower obviously but like he's still part of the AIAV crew I think, um, right. and uh, one of his his most notable uh, things about his play recently is he switched his team like to a completely different kind of team like com like just gameplay wise neutral game wise just completely different. Like, he went from, his old team was Wolverine, Nova Sentinel, to, uh, and he changed it to Magneto, Doom Sentinel. Um, and, yeah, uh, Ray, Ray Ray's team. Yeah, Ray Ray's team, which is, uh, like, uh, you, you have to have a completely different skill set to go from Magneto to, or Wolverine to Magneto. Um, and then just going down the rest of this slide here, <coughs> uh, we have <coughs> notable appearances, uh, Aziz, I actually just kind of guessed at a lot of this stuff. So, uh, if you want to like add any corrections or any other big, uh, big uh, showings that you had, let me know. I think I, I think you were actually at Curly Mustache as well, but I don't remember, and I didn't want to put that on there if it wasn't true. Um, but he got, he <laughs> didn't he get like top eight at the Street Fighter Anniversary Championships, like if for Cross Tekken or something, or top thirty two. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he did <laughs> <laughs> for Cross Tekken, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, he he's. Uh, he he makes 
I, I remember he had an appearance on the SoCal Regionals team, uh, so stream as well. Like he just, he obliterated some poor guy on on the SDR stream, and then uh, I remember like being in his general area like I think I was playing on a station next to him and like all the top players were crowding around him because they were like we need to see this this guy from Kuwait uh, play really well like I, we need to like challenge him he did so many money matches and did uh, did a lot of crazy stuff so I've heard like most people in our state would agree that Aziz has uh, next to Angelic the most out of state experience um, and he's by far the most uh, or one of the most national presences in our from in our scene um but uh so anyway uh ernest go, go ahead and take point like what what do you like do you have anything to share about aziz <laughs> um I, I mean i guess like on, on a personal front he's like the nicest guy you ever meet i mean it, 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 he'll he's willing to share information i mean as much as he travels it's not like he goes and and then does his thing comes back and and, and leaves you wanting for information like he, he came back he's like he's the first one to tell me like oh look at all this new magneto stuff i got <laughs> um, okay. <laughs> i'm like all right cool um so yeah i think that he's just a, a very generous person very giving just he's, he's willing to, to help the scene grow and i mean the reason why to be honest the reason i even play marvel is because of that guy so mm. um i mean I, I dabbled in it but i didn't take it seriously until he showed up in our scene one day and him and um him and Neil, um, Texican, that just showed up one day at Arcade in the Box, uh -huh. and they were playing Marvel, and uh, I remember um, uh, Marvin, he was, he just told me, he goes, hey, I met this guy at uh, an anime convention that was in Tucson, and he goes, you're really good at Marvel, you should play him, because at that point, I was the only one that was dabbling in it, because everybody else had kind of dropped off, and okay. uh, I just remember playing him, and he just had, he, he was playing his old team, Wolverine, Nova, uh, Nova and uh, Sentinel, and Man, I just I remember being frustrated because I couldn't <laughs> I couldn't I was like it was just some random guy, you know, I couldn't get um I couldn't get win streaks, we just traded games forever. And uh, -huh. uh yeah, that that frustrated me. I'm like, Okay, well who is this guy? And uh eventually, you know, just uh, talking to him, like I said, found out he's a really nice guy and he's just uh he's from Kuwait and White Tower and not like to be honest, I never even heard of the White Tower guys until uh until Z's. Hmm. But um yeah, and just, like I said, he's just he's just one of those guys that just makes you want. He, like he makes me want to play Marvel. I legitimately having fun playing Marvel, and it didn't. I didn't have that because there's nobody else in the scene here in Tucson. So mm -hmm. just that's yeah, that's that's great. actually a big point to make and uh, to know is like the the Tucson scene in general for Marvel is uh, incredibly small. Um, like you have. Like you just, I think you just named the entire Marvel scene for Tucson. Uh, yes. <laughs> Rock dabbles in it, but it's he no, it, yeah, that, I mean, it's pretty much just us three. Okay. And so, like, Aziz in general just doesn't get a lot of live practice outside of you and Neil, and so, um, that again is like to see him perform the way he did. Uh, it's just yeah, <laughs> and like the way he performs out of state as well. He's just definitely, uh, it, it's it's. It's really cool to see somebody take what little they've got and turn it into something really big, you know. <laughs> oh, and, and thanks to Aziz, he he bought canes for us the other day. Oh, really? So, nice. Uh, thank, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> make sure make sure I tell him that. Um, but yeah, it's just the ideas that he has about Marvel are. I mean, yeah, this guy is super smart. He, he reminds me a lot of Latif, the way Latif approaches matches in um, in Street Fighter. Um, you know, very analytical. He puts a lot of thought into matchups and how the game should be played it's the same way that Aziz does when he applies to Marvel. Mm -hmm. So if there's a particularly tough matchup that I'm having, I can go to him and be like, hey, what can I do different? And he'll, he's right there to let me know. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it, it's, it's very fortunate that we have someone like him to learn from. Mm -hmm. um, and just like, so we just, just trying to get on, get on that level. That's what we're trying to do. Just be right up there with Aziz. And, um, you know, it, like I, I, we probably wouldn't have any presence at all in the rankings if, if it wasn't for him. Definitely. Oh, yeah, so I, I've, you know, I've I've heard a lot of different mentalities as far as like what makes a scene really strong. Um, and sometimes having a small scene can be okay if you have the right players in that scene. Um, I think that uh, I think that Aziz is definitely one of those right players. Um, so going a little bit more deeper into his gameplay, at least he's he's made the switch. Um, how long or like what kind of bumps in the road do you think he came he he, he like ran into while picking up this team uh we talked about it 
I would say after the last round bat, the previous round bat, because you know, he was still playing his old team, okay. and he just teams that have projectiles. He just he just understood that he can't compete with them. There's there's no way because he doesn't have any projectile. You think about it, um, Sentinel gets shut down like Doombeam completely shuts down Sentinel. Um, I mean, same thing with Disruptor. So he's basically left with Nova Assist, which does nothing for him other than it's a combo extension basically. Yeah. So, yeah. And he couldn't kill. Like, you can't kill with that team off of one hit without a, a, a TAC or a reset. So it's like, um, the team itself was not optimized in any way. So it, his choices were, well, do I continue to play Wolverine, or do I go with, um, you know, a, a different character? And I think he had a lot of experience outside of the, the you know, outside of our, our scene with different players. And, and, you know, Magneto, he played Magneto forever. Um, and I think that it, it just the, the strength of that character is what drew, I guess, what drew Aziz to it. So he's okay. he just really, really, he's really ran with that because it just gives him, oh, it opens up so many options. And one of the uh, highlights of Aziz as a player is his movement. I don't, and, and I, I've told him this, I don't think there's any other player that has better movement, especially with Agneo, than, than him, other than maybe Ray Ray. Because that, try, just try to catch that guy. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> I, I, do, I know, I try, like every, every week, it's so hard. Um, but yeah, with, with a character like Magneto, it really just showcases how well movement is, um, how, how, how it can play into this game. So I think he's just taking advantage of his strengths, and he has a character that can do it fine. Okay. So, so what do you think, uh, what, what, what do you think stopped him, or why did he pick Doom over Nova, in your mind? Um, it's just, I think that's the strongest Magneto shell. You have to have Doom in there somewhere, and... It just well, just like as he was saying in, in the chat, he just doesn't want to limit himself. So you have to. Doom allows. Um, it, it covers for bad matches. You have Sentinel in the back, so you have Drone. But if the other character has beam, or the other team has a, some type of beam, at least the Doom beam gives you a chance to shut that down, and then allows Drones to come out right after that. So mm. I, I think that's the thinking behind that. Okay, that makes sense. That makes sense. Cause like, um, I I, I was thinking about it, and I was like, wait, so you have missiles, and you have drones and like don't those those function the same way but i completely forgot that he was using beam and like exactly in that beam gives him a way to clear the screen and approach from full screen and then safely call sentinel drones and so. it's actually a really good lockdown assist there it's a ton of blocks done like mm -hmm. if, if you can actually pin people on the ground with magneto um and you get hit by that you mean you're you're eating a 50 50 easy i mean it's just it's just a way another way to open people up right right so that's like any any mo most players like they would like I, w I would be more, I would not have been surprised if he had stuck with Nova and if he had gone Magneto Nova Sentinel because a lot of players when they're adding a new character on their team they don't want to like well exactly that they want to add a new character to their team but they don't want to drop their team entirely and uh and so but Aziz you know he just he he took the piece of paper crumpled it up threw it over his shoulder and said I'm going to run Magneto Doom Sentinel and yeah. just completely relearn how to play and uh seeing him jump into it as as like aggressively and as strongly as he did right there like <laughs> i i think very highly of that yeah yeah and also what he's what uh, like uh, as he's just saying also is that uh it's good for sniping assists i mean do beam it's really good for shutting down the other player's assists and then that allows magneto to take control of the screen and it's scary man <laughs> yeah uh, yeah when you get when you get locked on by that stuff uh, good luck <laughs> and so like I, I'm just fascinated by like how how quickly he picked up Doom because while Doom is like you know low barrier of entry as far as foot diving everything goes, like that only works for so long and like okay so right here actually he just got wrecked with Doom but <laughs> he did make some sick Doom comebacks during uh, during this set so like well you know Doom Sentinel is a really strong shell like yeah you can, yeah you can literally just super you can call missiles or uh, you can call uh, Sentinel drones super and you get and it then for free bring it in bring mm -hmm. it in. Yep, I think that yeah, that's, that's yeah, it's it's pretty nutty when he does that. I think I remember it, one one of our matches, I actually ended up throwing him out of it, and Aziz, I'm gonna admit that was an accident. I was trying to push block, <laughs> <laughs> but like yeah, he supered and he called drones, and like I threw him in between the drones. He was probably so mad at me, because <laughs> like that's that just, shit. That's Marvel, man. Yeah, I was I was push blocking, <laughs> um, but uh, okay, so let's let's go a little bit deeper into this Tijuana. Um, exhibition then. So he he OCV'd them uh, clean, 
Uh, well, not necessarily clean. Like, he drops a couple games here and there. Um, but what do you think... It's kind of hard to say, but, like, what, what do you think was his... was going through... <sighs> Let me try to let me try to formulate this here. I didn't really plan this part out very much, but like, how, how, how what kind of like how do you think the momentum really like played a role in his his uh, style of play? Like as uh, easy as a as easy as a player, I've noticed is pretty. He's very momentum based. So like, when do you think the momentum really started to pick up for him? Uh, I think it's after the first match. To be honest with you, like mm -hmm. if you look at the way that he can he controls people. Um, there's, there's certain te I, I know there's probably tests that he does to kind of see how you react, and once he knows what style of player you are, then he just goes nuts. Mm. So if, if you're the player that likes to push block or if you're not willing to block on the incoming, I mean, there's just there's a setup for everything. There's a response to, to, to basically anything that you have, and the momentum comes into play once he gets the read on you and he knows exactly how you play, then that's that's where he gets dangerous. And that's That's... What I think separates him from a lot of players is because um, a lot of players, they have a set game plan, and they're going to try to execute that game plan in any way possible. Um, but Aziz, I think, like how you mentioned, he's going to feel you out first and then alter his game plan accordingly. Um, but the, the kicker is that he had to do that in a 2 out of 3 set uh, as opposed to a standard 3 out of 5, and he had to do that for uh, f four different people. <laughs> right, right, so. right. Well, like I said, Aziz is a very smart player, so that's just... Uh, a credit to just how how much he understands the game, mm. and then people in general just understanding their playstyle. So to be able to do that in a match, uh, in, in literally one match, because you only have two, um, yeah, that, 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 that's actually pretty impressive. Very cool. Um, I guess real quick, is there any are there any uh, moments in that four v four that you'd like to, you'd like to look at or anything like that? Um, like anything that stands out? Okay. If not, no worries. I was just curious. The, the, the only thing that stands out to me is the Magneto, Magneto mirror. The other guy who plays my team, and uh, uh, it, it's just it's just a funny moment to me how they just uh, were. It's like they're standing Magneto chest to chest, and it's like this. Um, I, I don't know how to say it, but it's it's like the, the like who's manlier. Like I'm gonna uh, prove who's better with Magneto, and I thought that was very interesting to see that. You could you could see each of them just trying to establish their dominance with Magneto, and I just. That, that that part was very entertaining for me. Okay, um, so I figure I'm I'm kind of making this up on the fly, but maybe we should. Uh, why don't we go ahead and give him a, a match commentary on this this one at least, then, because this is okay. your favorite match here. So you know the yeah, you know both these <laughs> these teams better than anybody else at the moment. So, um, what what do you think is the game plan here based off their assists? Uh, let's see. Okay, so as um, so what what Aziz wants to do is is this guy using I didn't see him using missiles. No, using beam. Um, Aziz has got to find a way to get out drones. Like that, that's the entire, that's, uh, he needs to find out when the other guy wants to call Doom Beam and make sure that it's safe to call out drones. And while he's doing that, he's, um, basically he's going to zone out. Like it didn't happen this much, he just got grabbed in the beginning. But the idea is to, um, to lock down the other Magneto. Like that's the entire thing. Trying to get the hit is actually really tough in Magneto Magneto. Um, because hmm. everybody's flying around. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> You're, uh, you're zipping around everywhere, and it's just, oh, man, it's, uh, somebody mentioned Dragon Ball Z. That's, that's what it reminds me of. Yeah, <laughs> like, you got, you, yeah. like, you go in, and you, like, you hit each other for a little bit, and nobody gets a solid hit confirm, and then you back off and, like, fly away and charge up for two episodes, right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, but you can see, like, in a match like this, the, the, the first hit is so vitally important because once the other player, like, once you lose your point character, then, I mean, you have to keep the incoming mix up. Like, both of these teams are really strong on the incoming, so just, um... You don't want to be in that position, mm. and as you can see, as he's uh, he kind of he kind of paid for it because he got thrown at the very beginning, and it just went downhill from there. Right, right. Um, yeah, I didn't even really have to use the Dark Virgil that much, uh, but as he's a Sentinel though, has done work. Uh, obviously, it's not not right here, but um, like I remember, there were some shining moments of of her Sentinel in the past in this, this past uh, tournament. I wonder yeah. if I think I don't know if one of them's going to come up here, but. Uh, just something worth noting, but like he's doing like all the all the magnetic blast zoning perfectly. I've noticed like he's got the plink dash magnetic blast down. Yeah, as you can see, he got away uh, to begin with, and then uh, uh, Kiwana made a mistake, but uh, he's unfortunately got hit by the 
the backward hitbox of that super. Uh -huh. So now they're back to, to neutral game, and as you can see, they're both flying around the third and magnetic blast. And you know what I mean about drones? Um, right. That's exactly what Aziz wants. He needs those drones out because then it limits what the other magneto player can do because you can no longer just jump up there and throw uh, magnetic blast to try to zone the other guy out because what happened was he threw a magnetic blast, he hit a drone, and then Aziz just hit yep. a firm behind that. So, um, so that this time it worked out for him. Like Aziz's game plan is starting to take place. And that was just an execution mistake earlier. You saw him got put dive, he got put dove in or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> put dove. Yeah, that was just an execution mistake. But... Um, so yeah, now you just go back to zoning, and you see the Magneto trying to fight against, or um, excuse me, the Doom trying to fight against the Magneto with those assists behind him is just it's awful. <laughs> yeah, like basically with this match, Aziz has the front the front heavy team, and then uh, the Tijuana gentleman has uh, the back heavy team, where he's got he's got his weight distrib distributed to the back as well uh, with the Dark Virgil. So because of that, though, he doesn't have an, an extra assist like Aziz has. So. And as far as like getting drones out as soon as possible, the big deal about that is because his opponent doesn't have drones. <laughs> like, right. he has everything else that Aziz has, but he does not have drones. <clears throat> and uh, there's a the strength of the Doom Beam for this team, is when you're left with uh, Sentinel can hit confirm him off of that, which you don't think of Sentinel much as the rushdown character, but Doom Beam lets you be able to do that. And I don't, uh, I don't think that guy was ready for it, so he got hmm. hit by random, uh, random Sentinel stuff. <laughs> Yeah, another thing is like, like that the Sentinel drones in general, like he's he's very vulnerable when he comes out, but like it's, it's uh, once that once they're out, like those things have mad durability, man. Like they're very difficult to stop once they get out. <laughs> All right, so now he's yeah he's backing yeah, no, up just man, like man, he you said. Know, like, I was gonna say that's his best assist. I think Manio's best assist is drones. Mm. Cause it, it's a fortune that it comes attached to Sentinel, but it's <laughs> it's uh definitely his best assist. <laughs> So yeah, so, yeah. It's, so back to neutral. It's all about neutral. Right, right. Like, I I see the drones out constantly, and I actually see yeah the conversion here where he actually got that, and uh, he again he 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 wins the Magneto on Magneto fight, and that kind of just swings the whole match in his favor instantly. Yeah, and I mean Aziz just I mean we play this a ton, so he he knows this team, he knows how to break it apart, and you'll see that right now. Yep. Um, With a snap. Bring in. Yep. Bring it right in, and he knows. You get rid of Virgil, and uh, it's, it's, this team becomes significantly less uh, scary. <laughs> and so, yeah, yeah like... If you to do it, I mean, it doesn't matter. You, you kill Virgil, whatever it costs. Yeah, like, this is not as climactic of an ending to... Oh, never mind, I take that back. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Dr. Doom. And that was really good. He, like, he forced out X-Factor... Um, from Doom, but uh, Doom got the straight hit, so yep. now it's up to Aziz to survive. Which, you know, Doom, Doom is not that bad of a of an anchor, uh -huh. but it's just when you get away from him, that's where it gets tough, as the, the Doom player. Because you got to find a way back in. Right. I will say, though, that the way that guy punished the foot dive that led to this combo, like, he just did, like, crouch light into S, I found that to be pretty cool. That was just very, yeah, <laughs> very hard to do, I think. But Aziz taking the damage where he can get it here with the convert into the uh, hard drive. Oh, the throws. Yeah, it was, oh. a, little, it was a little too high. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this, this was a nail biter. Yeah, like, that's the second time he, uh, like the third time actually, where he just really got uh, somebody with the back dash off the Sentinel, the Sentinel uh, you know reset there. And Aziz told me he actually counts the dashes, so he knows exactly when to meet him, so you can't up back out of that. Oh really? Yeah. That's so pretty it's a, awesome. It's a, it's a meaty and it's a it's a mix up because he doesn't know what side he's gonna be on. <laughs> <laughs> well, cool. So uh, I think that that wraps up our uh, player spotlight, and I think that's actually gonna wrap up our show too. Um, I think that yeah. Uh, so uh, we're gonna try to do this every other week. Uh, we're gonna have a bunch of different guest commentators like Ernest on and. Uh, go over match videos and stuff like that. And I'd be, yeah, it'd be really cool if, we, if you'd come back sometime, Ernest, and uh, help us out uh, just like this. This is a pretty, pretty yeah. fun experience. No, no, it was a lot of fun. I appreciate it. 
Um, so again, this is the pilot episode, so we are going to be hammering out a lot of different, a uh, lot of different issues with the, the stream, and as far as my transitions go, as we get better at this, uh, I hope, uh, I hope you all enjoy, enjoyed. I feel like it. we need an outro. We need an outro, like a, a, a yeah. set us free kind of thing. Yeah, I know. I'm kind of, I'm kind of feeling like yeah. we need like a bigger, a bigger bang to end the show here. Um, but if you guys have any feedback or anything, I think that's probably the most important thing. Uh, uh, like, because if if this, this this show is well enough received, um, I would love to do it a week, do it weekly. Because I was looking through all these matches, and uh, we th <laughs> there's more matches than we can do shows of. Um, by no means am I going to be able to do it like a, a, a nightly show or anything like that. But I think maybe even once a week is possible. Yeah. Um, well, I, I would say you might want to close on what your predictions are, say for like next round bad or oh even sure the yeah, very cool, good point. Um, so. This next brand bat, it really is kind of a guess on as far as uh, so for the season at least. Brand bat seasons are always very difficult to predict because a lot of it has to do with who's able to come to the tournaments and who's not. But I will say for Cross Tekken and for Marvel, um, like Abe and Armando have not shown any signs of cracking or wanting to give up their spots. Uh, each of them has like gotten to grand finals and winners, and uh, just been and like have just destroyed their competition um and then but for for ae uh that's going to be kind of a toss-up because the best players are separated within different regions and so it's going to be like whoever will be there to really take 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 hold of the points there i don't know <laughs> uh, i guess a better question would be who would you outside of the, the the ones that seem almost guaranteed like who would you like to see step up or who would you like to see sure, make sure. some noise in the brackets um, like your favorite players, I guess. Your picks. Okay, sure, sure. Uh, so for for Cross Tekken, um, I'm always a fan of seeing uh, Sam play because I, I think that uh, Sam has kind of been in... Pardon me if I, I offend you, Sam. But Sam has kind of been in Scott's shadow for this entire duration of the game. And I think that he's uh, slowly making steps to get out of that shadow. Um, I think that for, for Street Fighter IV... Um, that Thunder God guy, like, again, I, I, I haven't seen him coming, like, I did not see him coming, I just, like, he's, I, I still don't really know the guy very well, but I'd love to see more of his Sakura play. Um, and Jason as well, uh, Jason, I'm, like, he's, like, that game's been around for four years, and I've never seen that guy before, and I guess he just started yeah, around yeah. AE. Um, yeah, he kind of came out of nowhere, too, I was surprised mm -hmm. to see him last round, but... With Dudley, yeah, and like I, I played him some casuals like a couple weeks ago, and like he plays Zangief and he plays Evil Ryu as well, um, so he actually knows the game pretty well. Um, and then for Marvel, uh, my favorite player to watch at least and to watch grow is Nam. Um, I think he's, yeah, like we talked about earlier, he's definitely stepped it up so much. So, how about you? <laughs> I, I can agree with that. Uh, okay, so for well, yeah, for for a. Uh, or, 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 sorry, for uh, cross Tekken, I think, I mean, as much work a, a, as A puts into it, I mean, I just, I can't, and he's been my buddy forever, I, I want to see him win, I would like to see Rock step it up too, because I think he deserves, I mean, he deserves at least second place, I mean, the amount of work that this guy puts in, and just the, how smart of a player he is, I just think sometimes the rankings just don't show how good he is, but it could be just some. He, he was probably just working out some kinks in the first round, bad. But anyway, I just expect to see him place higher consistently. Sure. At least take you know take a round bad. Or I, I don't know. Has he ran? I don't think he's won one yet for cross Tekken. Rock. But, um, yeah. I think either Abe or Sam or. Um, I know. Or, uh, yeah, um, Scott. Scott. Yeah. yeah. I, you know what? But, I don't. I don't think Rock has won one. But uh, yeah, if I had to huh. say if there's one person I'd like to see like step up and win one, and it's certainly deserving of so, it would be Rock in, in cross second. Yeah. Okay. Um, but uh, and then we're moving on to AE. I mean, uh, Isaac's definitely a strong contender. Like I, I, I can see him uh, definitely being a contender in there. Uh, same thing with SNK. Um, I don't want to be biased, but I would love to be able to win. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> I uh, I'm definitely in a position to do so. I mean, yep. I just I I, uh, I would. Uh, those are those are my two biggest humps or hurdles to, to get over are those two guys so it's going to see it's going to come down to what happens in the last couple round backs but um sure yeah I mean, I, i'm my biggest fan <laughs> so <laughs> no, i'm just i'm just joking i'm joking but uh no i, I mean uh, uh, isaac i, I would uh, if if i had to say that i'd like to see isaac continue to win and continue to grow because i i think 
he's by he's he's definitely the best player we have in our scene. Like for yeah, definitely. All right. Um, and then for for Marvel, same thing. I mean, Angelic. I just you can see the way that he like the the change in his play. I've noticed since I first since I first started playing Marvel seriously and um, have gotten a, more of an opportunity to speak with him. It just you can see the way his gameplay has changed. He's definitely a lot smarter in the decisions that he makes, and just he's just all around. In the, uh, a very improved player so that award for the rising stars with i mean that that, that just says it all I mean, he, he's definitely way definitely, <laughs> uh, up there um if there's anybody that would, i would want to see challenge him to be honest, I, I love watching uh the way you play moji i just i, I think if, um, you're a little bit more consistent I, I don't see why you couldn't win a random bat so <laughs> uh, um, appreciate that yeah and uh and of course aziz i think aziz like you said he's one of the most underrated players in arizona so mm -hmm. uh to see, I, I'd love to see him up there. Um, you know, and, and he's certainly deserving of, of making it to grand finals. And, uh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Done a pretty good show. So yeah, that's what I, that's at least that's what I like to see in these next couple of rounds. So. Very cool, very cool. Uh, okay, yeah. So with that, let's uh, let's close out our pilot here. Again, if you have any uh, suggestions or feedback, please let us know. Um, oh oh, and uh, don't forget, uh, we will be all making a trip out to Arcade in a Box this coming Saturday. Uh, it's going to be kind of a boot camp session, uh, and uh, f so for any of our Phoenix players who have not been to Arcade in a Box in Tucson, uh, please make an effort to come out. Uh, we'll be doing carpools and everything like that, and uh, uh, it's it's just a wonderful place to go. Uh, it's very inspiring to go there and play video games for eight or nine hours, <laughs> and then and play with Tucson's best. And uh, just it's it's a, it's a giant. It's a it's a store basically. It's a room that not a room but like a what is it like a former preschool or something? <laughs> but uh, it's 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 basically an entire space dedicated to playing your fighting games, and it's just the atmosphere is something that is uh, irreplaceable. Yeah, you just, you can't describe it until you're there, and um, mm -hmm. I mean everybody's just super friendly. And we're all willing to help, uh, especially. I mean we're. Obviously, we're specialists in Street Fighter, so cross tech and Street Fighter. If you want to learn, I mean, come out there and, and uh, you know, I'll be happy to sit down and just ex break down the game, tell you what I think, and mm -hmm. um, you know, especially if you, if you want to get better in that game, especially, yeah, come out. And then I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to having more Phoenix guys come out, especially for Marvel, just because we never get a chance to play casually with you guys. Everything we learn yeah. is in the tournament. Um, and I always make this excuse when I play. It's like I have to learn. I have to learn in tournament. Like I can't learn matchups. Like oh, obviously I can learn the game, learn the mechanics of the game with Aziz, but you know that that's no substitute for real world experience or in the game, especially. You can only get that playing casual against other people. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I mean just the, the opportunity. That's what I'm most excited for: the opportunity to be able to play just casual sets with um, with, uh, with whoever comes out, whatever Phoenix guys decide to show up. Me, so. me too. Like, uh, like this is going to be one of the the first tournaments in a while, or not tournaments, but gatherings in a while where I won't be running anything or hosting anything so I can just go as a player and play casuals with as many people as I want and Tucson events are always pretty pretty uh, awesome feelings for that <laughs> yeah man. so I'm certainly looking forward to it I hope, I hope uh, a lot of people can make it and mm -hmm. uh, you know I, I unfortunately work that day but I will be there uh, probably about a half hour after it starts so I'll, I'll, and I'll be there all night Yep, and uh, most most of us Phoenix guys will be there right when it starts as well. Uh, hit us up on Facebook or in the Spiral Series page or any anywhere if you guys need a ride. Uh, we can work out carpools and get a caravan going. So, but yeah, so that closes out our pilot for the Spiral Series highlight reel. I had this big thing with the acronym SSHR and pronouncing it sure, but I'm finding that Spiral Series highlight reel isn't that much of a mouthful. So we'll just call it that. But uh, oh yeah, and Aziz will be at Canada Cup. Uh, let's all cheer him on there. Oh yeah, uh, good luck to Aziz. Yeah. Yep. Anybody, if you have like, I'm gonna have my phone, but if anybody has like a wireless, like a 4G card or something, so we can watch the stream if you're coming out, that'd be awesome. So, um, somebody make that happen, please. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. So, uh, with that, thank you guys very much for tuning in. This uh, show will also be on our YouTube uh, page, uh, YouTube.com/slash/SpiralSeries. I know on the thing it says User/slash/SpiralSeries, but like. You don't have to put user in there if you don't want to. And like us on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Er, Ernest, do you have a Twitter or anything? Uh, I don't have Twitter. Um, <laughs> okay, well, friend him on but, Facebook and join yeah, our SRK Facebook. group. Do all that fun stuff. So, uh, With that, let's uh, close it out. I'll see you guys all later. Right. Bye, Thanks Ernest. For me.